الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In today's hadith of the day I'm going to share with you a saying from our beloved fourth holy imam Imam al-Sajjad also known as Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam As narrated in Usul al-Kafi Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam said While people aware of what lies in the obtainment of knowledge they would pursue it even though they had to make voyages and endanger their lives to obtain it In these hectic lives that we live in focused on work, school etc sometimes we can forget but how important it is to dedicate time to seeking knowledge and how beneficial it is for us On a basic level knowledge strengthens the mind and leaves you more prepared to deal with life's outcomes. Wealth, health, and all that we own may come and go, but knowledge always stays and always benefits you. And we also know of the immense blessings that come with seeking it. Perhaps this is why the Imam said that if we knew what lies in the obtainment of knowledge, we would even endanger ourselves to obtain it. So, let's dedicate more time to seeking knowledge, wherever that knowledge may be. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, my dear brothers and sisters. We are on the top floor, top studio of Imam Hussein TV. As you can see, uh, the staff and workers have been working hard. The wall is getting ready, of, uh, uh, plus the ceiling, and they done uh, some of the lighting. And Alhamdulillah, they've been doing good work, and we hope. To, by your support and your donation, we can work it as fast as we can. Inshallah, we will pray for you. And as you can see, we are front of the shrine of Abu Abdullah Al Hussein. Sallallahu alayka, Abu Abdullah. Sallallahu alayka, Ibn Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayka, Ibn Amir Al Mu'minin. Wa Ibn Sayyid Al Wasayyid. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Meet this household consisting of 13 orphan children and three widows, all living under one roof. The father of the house, who was a hard-working man, sadly passed away in a car accident. Since then, the family who lived a happy and comfortable life are now struggling to obtain the minimal necessities of life. <laughs> Since the father's death, this family who lived a happy and comfortable life are now struggling to obtain their bare minimal necessities of life. Their father had provided them with everything they needed. Now that he is not around anymore, they are fighting to stay alive and are constantly being intimidated by debt holders. يعني هم فطنوا عليه بس دول الزغار ما فطنوا عليه هم فطنوا يعني درون بيته وتوفى أي والله هم عسر عليهم مرات يبتشوا يذكرون يقول إن عايشين بخير أكل نزين مصرف نزين ما محتاجين هسه أثر عليهم يعني الملابس شوية لكيل يعني ما جاء يأكلون أكل زين الله شاهد على الطماطات مرات نشتريها المرات طماطة أكثر شيء طماطة نأكل لا دجاج لا سمس لا لحم لا كل شيء 
اللحظه اللي شفتها بي متوفي يعني اصعب لحظه في حياتي يعني صعبه كلش يعني خلاني مطلوبين دين تجيني ايدي انا اللي ما اعرف اشكالها على ابني يعني هو ابن الكبير مواليد 2003 تجين دي انا لحد الان هو مديون الحج لحد الان تجين دي انا تهددني انا وابني هو ابني هو الكبير هاي المره الكبير يعني ما عاد هو ولد كبير هو ابني يهددوني بابني يقولون له سجنك يقولون له خطفك يقولون بيع البيت تطلعون من عده واحنا ناخذه يعني ادافع بهم دافعة بعد ما ادري شو اسوي والعيشة يعني العيشة صعبة كلش العيشة عيشة الحج كان معيشة ثلاث عوائل يعني كلها بدي يعني يدين وهاي يردون الحلال من ابني ابني هو الكبير كل هو ما عنده منين اجيب هو يشتغل عماله العماله شيء يحصل يعني يوميته 20 15 واكثر من مرات ماكو وهاي العائله يعني طحين وهاي والله البارحه انا دينت 30 الف اشتريت شيء طحين انا رحت للجيران دينت 30 الف اشتريت شيء طحين لهاي العائله منين تجيب والله اكثر من مرات نضل بلا مصرف نهائيا ماكو والله اذا واحد دينا 10000 انا ادي ناخذ ولا ابني ما ما يدين ولا ما يطلع يدين هو لو يطلع عماله لو يضل قاعد. Each member of the family are facing many social challenges, including the younger children. The more humility they face, the more they miss their father. Their father's death has left a huge scar in their life. وهذا ابني بالمدرسه والله يروح في البلد مشي، انا ما عندي اعطي له خط. أو دي مشي منا يروح ويا الشارع مشي والله ملابسه مالت العام ما اشتريت له ملابس السنه مال العام حتى الجنطه مشققه مال العام هو ابني هذا اللي بالمدرسه ما حالته الصحيه مو شيء والله عنده يعني فخر دي مزمن عنده عنده التهاب يعني جتنا يعني خبر ابوي صار لنا مثل الصدمه يعني طلع من يمنا كل ما بيه يعني فجاه تخسرين يعني شخص قال عليك مثل ابوك وشيء يعني مره راح ابوي يعني سجلت انذلينا بعده اول شيء حصلنا الجوع ثاني شيء لا ابو لا شيء لا مسرب يعني كل شيء صار حسر علينا يعني البشر ويعني صارت مثل الصدمه عندي حتى سمنا شيء يعني كلها تقول لي انت مخابله ما ادري شنو لان مثل الصدمه صارت عندي يعني هسه حتى من اجى عيد او شيء كلها يشوفون عداء ابو وشيء يعني أكثر شيء من شوفين عيد العيد يعني يعني كانوا يعني وفجأة خسري يعني أبوي ما كان يعني صدق ما عنده بس مو خلينا محتاجين شيء ولا حتى يعني نستمنى بشر أما هسه لا والله إيش أقول لك يعني كل شيء حسرة يعني يعني من وراء ذلينا كلش يعني هسه حتى مرات من يجي العيد يرد نروح له كرومة عدنا نروح له للوادي كل المرات ما نروح يعني هاي أبوي صار له سنتين متوفى يعني متوفى أبوي صدق ما عيدنا بالعيد يعني ما عيدنا مثل الوادم يعني شنو نحكي يعني صرنا بعد مدلولين عشنا بالذله ايش اقول له يعني اقول له مش له يعني الوالد ما يتعور كل شيء ما يريد من عنده بس كون يجي يمنع
الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In today's hadith of the day I'm going to share with you a saying from our beloved fourth holy imam Imam al-Sajjad also known as Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam As narrated in Usul al-Kafi Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam said While people aware of what lies in the obtainment of knowledge they would pursue it even though they had to make voyages and endanger their lives to obtain it In these hectic lives that we live in focused on work, school etc sometimes we can forget but how important it is to dedicate time to seeking knowledge and how beneficial it is for us On a basic level knowledge strengthens the mind and leaves you more prepared to deal with life's outcomes. Wealth, health, and all that we own may come and go, but knowledge always stays and always benefits you. And we also know of the immense blessings that come with seeking it. Perhaps this is why the Imam said that if we knew what lies in the obtainment of knowledge, we would even endanger ourselves to obtain it. So, let's dedicate more time to seeking knowledge, wherever that knowledge may be. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, my dear brothers and sisters. We are on the top floor, top studio of Imam Hussain TV. As you can see, uh, the staff and workers have been working hard. The wall is getting ready, of, uh, uh, plus the ceiling, and they done uh, some of the lighting. And Alhamdulillah, they've been doing good work, and we hope. To, by your support and your donation, we can work it as fast as we can. Inshallah, we will pray for you. And as you can see, we are front of the shrine of Abu Abdullah Al Hussein. Sallallahu alayka, Abu Abdullah. Sallallahu alayka, Ibn Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayka, Ibn Amir Al Mu'minin. Wa Ibn Sayyid Al Wasayyid. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Meet this household consisting of 13 orphan children and three widows, all living under one roof. The father of the house, who was a hard-working man, sadly passed away in a car accident. Since then, the family who lived a happy and comfortable life are now struggling to obtain the minimal necessities of life. <laughs> Since the father's death, this family who lived a happy and comfortable life are now struggling to obtain their bare minimal necessities of life. Their father had provided them with everything they needed. Now that he is not around anymore, they are fighting to stay alive and are constantly being intimidated by debt holders. يعني هم فطنوا عليه بس دول الزغار ما فطنوا عليه هم فطنوا يعني درون بيته وتوفى اي والله هم يعثر عليهم مرات يبكي ويذكرون يقول كنا عايشين بخير اكلنا زين مصرفنا زين ما محتاجين هسه اثر عليهم يعني الملابس شويه الاكل يعني ما جاي ياكلون اكل زين الله شاهد على الطماطات مرات نشتريها مرات طماطه اكثر شيء طماطه ناكل لا دجاج لا سمس لا لحم لا كل شيء 
اللحظه اللي شفتها بي متوفي يعني اصعب لحظه في حياتي يعني صعبه كلش يعني خلانا مطلوبين دين تجيني ايدي انا اللي ما اعرف اشكالها على ابني يعني هو ابن الكبير مواليد 2003 تجيني دي انا لحد الان هو مديون الحجي لحد الان تجيني دي انا تهددني انا وابني هو ابني هو الكبير هاي المره الكبيره يعني ما عاد هو الكبير هو ابني هددون بابني يقولوا له سجنك يقولوا له خطفك يقولوا نبيع البيت تطلعون من عده واحنا ناخذه يعني ادافع بهم دافع بعد ما ادري شو اسوي والعيشه يعني العيشه صعبه كلش العيشه عيشتنا الحج كان معيش ثلاث عوائل يعني كلها بدي يعني يدي يعني وهاي ياردون الحلال من ابني ابني هو الكبير كلهم انا ما عنده امني اجيب هو يشتغل عماله العماله شيء يحصل يعني يوميتها عشرين خمسطعش واكثر المرات ماكو وهاي العائله يعني طحين وهاي والله البارحه انا دينت ثلاثين الف اشتريت شي سطحين انا رحت للجيران دينت ثلاثين الف اشتريت شي سطحين لهاي العائله منين تجيب والله اكثر المرات نظل بلا مصرف نهائيا ماكو والله اذا واحد دينا عشرة الاف انا ادين اخذ ولا ابني ما ما يدين ولا ما يطلع يدين هو لو يطلع عماله لو يضل قاعد. Each member of the family are facing many social challenges including the younger children. The more humility they face the more they miss their father. Their father's death has left a huge scar in their life. وهذا ابني بالمدرسه والله يروح في البلد مشي انا ما عدي اعطي له خط. أودي مشي من يروح ويا الشارع مشي والله ملابس مالت العام ما اشتريت له ملابس السنة مال العام حتى الجنطة مشققة مال العام هو ابني هذا اللي بالمدرسة ما حالته الصحية مو شيء والله عد يعني فخر دي مزمن عدة عدة التهاب يعني جتنا يعني خبر ابوي صار لنا مثل الصدمه، يعني طلع من يمنا كل شيء ما بيه، يعني فجأة تخسرين يعني شخص قال عليك مثل ابوك وشيء. يعني مرة راح ابوي يعني بشغلك انذلينا بعده. اول شيء حصلنا جوع، ثاني شيء لا ابو لا شيء، لا مصرف. يعني كل شيء صار حسر علينا. يعني البشرة ويعني صارت مثل الصدمة عندي، حتى سمنا شيء يعني كلها تقول لي انت مخابلة ما ادري شنو، لان مثل الصدمة صارت عندي، يعني هسه حتى من يجى عيد او شيء كل شيء عداء ابو شيء يعني اكثر شيء من شوي عيد العيد يعني كان وياك وفجاه تخسري قال ابوي ما تشتري يعني صدقوا ما عنده بس مو مخلينا محتاجين شيء ولا احط يعني نست منه بشر اما هسه لا والله ايش اقول لك يعني كل شيء حسره يعني يعني من وراء ذلينا كلش يعني هسه حتى مرات من يجي العيد نروح نروح لكره ما عدنا نروح للوادي، كل المرات ما نروح. يعني هاي ابوي صار له سنتين متوفي، يعني من توفى ابوي صدق ما عيدنا بالعيد. يعني ما عيدنا مثل الوادي. يعني شنو نحكي بالاذن يعني صرنا بعده مذلولين، عشنا بالذله، ايش اقول له يعني؟ اقول له اشتغلت له. يعني الوالد ما يتعوض كل شيء ما يريد من عنده بس يكون يجي يمنع
الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In today's hadith of the day, I'm going to share with you a saying from our beloved fourth holy Imam, Imam al-Sajjad, also known as Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam. As narrated in Usul al-Kafi, Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam said, While people aware of what lies in the obtainment of knowledge, they would pursue it even though they had to make voyages and endanger their lives to obtain it. In these hectic lives that we live in, focused on work, school, etc., Sometimes we can forget about how important it is to dedicate time to seeking knowledge and how beneficial it is for us. On a basic level, knowledge strengthens the mind and leaves you more prepared to deal with life's outcomes. Wealth, health and all that we own may come and go, but knowledge always stays and always benefits you. And we also know of the immense blessings that come with seeking it. Perhaps this is why the Imam said that if we knew what lies in the obtainment of knowledge, we would even endanger ourselves to obtain it. So, let's dedicate more time to seeking knowledge, wherever that knowledge may be. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, my dear brothers and sisters. We are on the top floor, top studio of Imam Hussein TV. As you can see, uh, the staff and workers have been working hard. The wall is getting ready, of, uh, uh, plus the ceiling, and they done uh, some of the lighting. And alhamdulillah, they've been doing good work, and we hope by your support and your donation we can work it as fast as we can inshallah we will pray for you and as you can see we are front of the shrine of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. sallallahu alayka ya Abu Abdullah sallallahu alayka ya ibn Rasulullah sallallahu alayka ya ibn Amir al-Mu'mineen wa ibn Sayyid al-Wassayyid assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah Meet this household consisting of 13 orphan children and 3 widows, all living under one roof. The father of the house, who was a hard-working man, sadly passed away in a car accident. Since then, the family who lived a happy and comfortable life are now struggling to obtain the minimal necessities of life. Since the father's death, this family who lived a happy and comfortable life are now struggling to obtain their bare... We question our daily position Seeking answers and definitions Get the queries of your chest with Ahkam SOS Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to another live show of Ahkam SOS. Before we start, we would like to congratulate Sahab al Asr wa Zaman on this great day and it is the greatest Eid that we celebrate and it is Eid al Ghadir, the day of 
Wilayat Ali ibn Abi Talib and the day of appointing Ali ibn Abi Talib as the first Khalifa after the Prophet, peace be upon him. We congratulate Sahib al Asr wa Zaman as well as the viewers and all the Maraj al Awam. I'm your host, Abu Talib Muhammad, and I'm joined by Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah. On this great day. Asadallah ayamakum. Asadallah ayamakum, and alhamdulillah, Allah has given us the wilayat of Ali ibn Abi Talib, and may Allah, inshallah, keep us on this route. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbana. How are you coping with the weather today? Alhamdulillah. It's extreme Fine. temperatures. Alhamdulillah. We're alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. As we have said before, the show is live and we're taking in questions via YouTube, via Facebook, as well as WhatsApp. You can also give us a live call on plus four four zero two zero three five one five zero one double nine nine. Getting to speak to the Sheikh and getting a live response for your question. Sheikh Ne, we've got many questions coming in and I would like to start off with a question which is really... Um, in the appropriate to what today's celebration is about. It's about Eid al-Ghadir. And the question says, can you elaborate on the prophetic sermon on the day of Ghadir and how did he appoint Imam Ali, peace be upon him, as his successor? A'udhu billahi al-sami' al-alim min al-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin. Wa la'natullahi ala a'da'ihim ajma'in. Amin rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah, alladhi ja'alana من المتمسكين بولاية أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام والأمة مولده سلام الله عليه مجمعين مي الله عز وجل جواس the opportunity to visit this great Imam in Najaf in Ashraf إن شاء الله إله يامين and to gain his شفاعة in the day of judgment إن شاء الله إله يامين the Holy Prophet gave sermon on the day of Ghadir when he stopped thousands of Muslims to witness this great day yes the appointment of Ali ibn Abi Talib, Amir al-Mu'mineen, sallamullahi alayhi, in the front of the Sahaba, in the front of thousands of you know, uh, uh, followers of Islam, yes. and narrators, and, and people who came uh, for the Hajjat al-Wada'a. No. Part of the uh, uh, sermon, I would mention that how the Holy Prophet, sallallahu took the bay'ah from the Muslims uh, not just by shaking hand, no. by other means, as we're going to see and examine through part of the sermon. The Holy Prophet ﷺ said, معاشر الناس إنكم أكثر من أن تصافقوني بكف واحدة uh, That many of you would now you know, shake hand with me and pay allegiance yes. by shaking hand. This is how it was in the old days, that they would shake hand as means of allegiance. paying allegiance. وقد أمرني الله عز وجل أن أخذ من ألسنتكم الإقرار. الله عز وجل commanded me to take confession for this appointment, but through your tongues. In other words, verbal bay'a. Yes. So he did physical bay'a by shaking hands, but he also asked them. By Allah Azza wa Jal to give dhru al-bay'a, basically. Bima aqadtu la'ali min imrat al-mu'mineen. So what he is, you know, appointed Ali alayhi salam as Amir al-mu'mineen, as the commander of the faithful. Wa man jaa ba'dahu min al-ammati alayhi wa salam. And also he mentioned the imams who will come after the commander of Imam Ali alayhi salam, that he's not... He didn't only appoint Ali alayhi salam, but also his sons السلام, no. on this great day. Yes. Then he said, uh, بأجمعكم, All of you say, inna sami'un, We have listened. Yes. مطيعون, we have obeyed. Radun, we have been satisfied. Munqadun, we are submissive. No. All verbal. In this way. And this is of the thousands which are present. Exactly. لما بلغت عن ربنا وربك what you have delivered from Allah عز وجل and your Lord and our Lord. Yes. في أمر علي صلى الله عليه to the matter of Ali عليه السلام because the appointment was to to the leadership and خلافة after him. وأمر ولده and his sons so the Holy Prophet not only appointed Ali عليه السلام as خليفة but also his sons. His sons after him. من صلبه from his lineage من الأمة عليه السلام السلام نبايعك على ذلك now not only physical بيعة not only verbal بيعة but also 
He said to them to repeat, Nubayu'uka, that we give bay'ah, pay allegiance. No. Ala dhalika biqulubina with our hearts, number one. Wa anfusina with our souls. Wa alsinatina with our tongues. Wa aydina with our hands. No. Complete package of bay'ah. Yes. The Holy Prophet took from the Sahaba and the companions who were in Ghadir Khum. So there would be no place of excuse of not knowing or you know forgetting and, and so forth. It's all been done clear, you know, as they say, crystal clear. Yes. Made everything clear that this is your Khalifa leadership after you know leader after me. No. And I took all types of the bay'ah. From everybody present. Exactly, exactly. On this bay'ah, we would be alive dead. and dead and will be uh, resurrected in Qiyamah. Yes. We wouldn't change, change, we wouldn't modify and we wouldn't be in doubt. Yes. Certain, definite, uh, you know, clear bay'ah to this man who is Imam Ali alayhi salam, after the Holy Prophet, straight away, no. without any gaps. As no question. As, as soon as he departs this world, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Imam Ali would take the post of leadership of the Imam and the Khilafah after the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Thank you very much, Sheikh. It's really clear the hadith that you've given us. You've literally given us details translated word by word that we have no doubt in regards to who was the first Khalifa. It's there. It's in bold and it's got evidence that it was Ali ibn Abi Talib. And another question is, nobody else than Ali ibn Abi Talib deserves to be appointed in such a status. It is only for Ali ibn Abi Talib. And inshallah, we are always certain and we are always the followers of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And we assure ourselves that it was nobody else but Ali ibn Abi Talib. And alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, that Allah has given us the wilaya of Ali ibn Abi Talib and the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib and his family for us to be celebrating such a great day. Shaykh, we come down to another question and the question says, what is the evidence of the prohibition of beer? Of course, beer is haram in Islam. Uh, we have a narration in Kitab al-Wasail that the Imam Ali Islam says, al-fuqa'u khamrun istazgharahu nas that beer is, a, is alcohol, is part of the alcohol, but people took it lightly. Yeah. Uh, thinking that it's just a uh, barley drink, you know, barley. Yes. Uh, it's fermented. It's been, you know, became haram as, as a result of fermentation and the process of becoming uh, as part of the alcohol family. No. So uh, it's haram, definitely. We have another hadith. And Rada alayhi salam, Imam Rada says that he was asked about if it's haram. He said, haramun wa huwa khamrun. That beer is haram, and it's, it's forbidden, and it's alcohol. It's part no. of the alcohol family. Yes. It's forbidden. So one is not allowed to drink uh, this type of uh, alcohol. Of Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikh Nair. That's a great and straight response. We've got another WhatsApp question, and it's really good to see that people are sending in their questions. Uh, the WhatsApp question says, Salaamu Alaikum, please, yeah. is putting pictures of my family on the wall haram? No, it's not haram. It's just that when it comes to the time of Salah, just cover it with a curtain no. and uh, pray because it's makruh, discouraged, which means uh, the, the rewards would be less no. when you have pictures in your room of, of humans or animals, no. living creatures. In, in so to words. cover it, it's with a, much with a curtain. No, no, yeah. no. Thank you very much. <coughs> Sheikh, now we've got another YouTube question. It says, can a Sayyid girl marry with a non-Sayyid boy? So this individual, she's a Alwiya, <coughs> she's from the... Uh, Taselsur from the family tree of, of a Sayyid, can she marry to a non Sayyid uh, boy or man? The prophetic narration is very clear that he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man Ja'akum, whoever comes, Tardawna Khulakahu wa Dina, or Dina Khulakahu, that whoever comes and you're happy with his religion and, and moral and ethics, akhlaq and deen, no. then marry him. So he didn't really, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Differentiate between the Sayyid and non Sayyid. No. <coughs> Thank you very much for that, Sheikh. We've got another question. It's, it's a YouTube question. It's similar to the WhatsApp question in regards to uh, pictures being hung on the wall, but I'll read it out. It says, Sheikh, now is it okay for me to pray in a room where pictures are hung up the wall, but it's behind me so I can't see them? Is that okay? It's a YouTube question. 
and I think it's going to be a similar response. Exactly. Makruf discouraged. It's discouraged. So yeah. if there are pictures, even if they're behind you, <coughs> put a curtain in it, put a, a towel, cover it up, and um, it's better for you to pray with no images around. We've got another YouTube question. It says, is it true that Judas was the one who was crucified on the cross? Of course, the Quran is very clear. It says, Shubbiha lahum. The one who was crucified was somebody else. <coughs> no. I'm not sure exactly who, who was that who individual. That was, no. And was he good or bad? And another, there's another discussion and debate about if he the good guy or the bad guy. Was he one of the disciples of Jesus A.S.? Disciples or was somebody who was an enemy of, of Jesus A.S. Who reported to the guards that, you know, Isa is here, come and catch him, for example. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not sure which... I mean, the person who was, but in, in overall, the Quran is very clear. The yeah. one who was hanged or, or crucified yes. was somebody else. Somebody else. Not Isa, alayhi salam, definitely. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. Thank you very much for sending in your questions. It's really good to see that we're having YouTube questions as well as WhatsApp questions. And inshallah, we are answering as many questions as we can. We have another question, and I believe it is a WhatsApp question. And it says, what is the ruling for the one who lives next to a mosque? Is it mandatory for him to pray in the mosque? Um, it is discouraged or makruh for the one who is uh, living next to a, a mosque, you know, neighbor of a mosque. Just a two minutes walk, let's say, for example, yes. to the mosque. Prays at home. And that's makruh. As I've said again, uh, less tawab, less rewards will be given to no. this individual. No. Uh, we have a prophetic hadith in Wasa'il al-Shia. عن النبي صلى الله عليه وآله that he said لا صلاة لجار المسجد إلا في مسجده that the salah would not be that rewardable in, in, in a complete reward um, unless for, for the one who lives next to the uh, as a neighbor of the mosque unless he prays in that masjid which is next to his house no. in other words the thawab would be less for this individual who doesn't pray and without any reason without any issues so it's better for the one to pray and to keep, uh, you know, the, uh, to revive these masajid. Yes. Dhikrullah Azza wa Jal. I mean, if it's a two minute walk, like you're saying, even if it's a five minute walk or a 10 minute walk, um, <clears throat> every steps, I believe as well, there is thawab for them because you're making a way to go for the prayers. Inshallah, um, that's a straight answer. Sheikhna, we've got another question and it says, um, Sheikhna, is it allowed to spy, lie and do anything that is haram in order to fend in order to defend Islam, it's a YouTube question. So they want to, uh, they want to spy, they want to lie, or do anything which is haram in our day-to-day -day runnings. But it's because they want to defend defend Islam. You see, when it comes to the issues of security and defending the Islam territory, the land of Islam, the religion of Islam, uh, maybe there's a war as well. For example, we have to go back to the Hakim al Sharia, the Marja and ask the ijazah and the permission from the Hakim al -Shar. No. That's the best and the safest way. Otherwise, we're going to be in trouble of maybe even spilling the, you know, uh, the blood of somebody who is innocent, for example, <coughs> to shed somebody no. as, a, as a result. Let's say if he wants to spy, yes. and suddenly this individual wasn't a spy. He was yes. actually an innocent, an innocent person. Yes. So we have to be very careful with these issues, that we go back to Hakim al and ask ijazah. That's no. the best way and safest no. way. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. Um, I believe we have a caller. Um, Salaamu Alaikum. Hello, How are you, brother? You're well? Okay, thank you. Jazakallah. Uh, Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak to you as well. Thank you very much. Uh, so I had uh, three questions. Yes. Um, so firstly, if you were to write on a cake uh, to celebrate, if you were to write Okay, brother, brother, I need you to speak to the phone and just speak slowly and clearly because I can't hear anything. Is this better? Can you repeat your question? Is that better? Yeah, Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so if you were to write something on a cake yes, um, and then cut the cake, something yes. Islamic, Islamic saying or some quotation, would yes. that be permissible? Okay. Okay. That's the but first question. My next question was, um, so I had this before, but do you know like when you place the bird food on the grave, um, 
I saw uh, cousins were doing it directly on the grave, and then um, it was just verses. Are you still able? Are you able to? Is it permission to put directly onto the grave, or should you get a container and put it beside the verses? Uh, and then the Third final question. question was, do you know if you've got a skin allergy? Yes. Um, so I've got a skin allergy with the heat. And then, um, is it permissible to uh, trim off the arms and legs hair? Okay, inshallah. Thank you very much for that, brother. That's three questions. I'll repeat the questions back to the Sheikh and we'll get them answered one by one. Thank you very much for your questions. Sheikh, now the first question is about um, writing a hadith or things that have to do with Islam, like for example, if it's the, if it's the birth of Imam Ali and it says uh, Imam Ali or Eid al Ghadir or it says Man kuntu mawla fahada Ali al mawla or a hadith, and most likely it's about again celebrations and, and names of Ahlul Bayt. Um, is it acceptable to have that on cakes which are going to be caked or baked or anything that's going to be edible? So, what does the Sharia say about this? As long as it doesn't uh, breach the sanctity of these holy names, for example, or the verse and so forth shouldn't, yeah. be, shouldn't be a problem. So we have to see um, if it doesn't breach the sanctity of that. No, so it's acceptable. That mm -hmm. And that also includes like if it was an ayah as well as Ismullah. As I've said again, uh, if it doesn't breach the sanctity, should be no problem. Inshallah, inshallah. So I believe having it on cakes or having it on things which are going to be edible, it doesn't breach its sanctity. So that should be fine. The second question was um, if they were going to go to a graveyard and put roses down. Will they be able to put the roses down straight on the grave or will they have to put the side of the grave? Is there anything that says where the roses should be set or how we should be treating the graves? I haven't heard <coughs> anything about the roses, but you can bring roses and put what, what is mentioned is to wash the grave, no. basically, to wash it no. uh, when you go there. And uh, it's basically to water it yeah, water. as well as reciting Qur'an exactly, Quran, exactly. or reading Ziyarat Ashura. Reciting well. seven times in Nanz and Nah, that would remove the, any torment or adab. No. From the seven uh, times in Nanz and Nah, 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 nah yes. by very, the very important. That's very important, yes. inshallah. Thank you very much. <coughs> and the final question, and it was, um, if the individual had any allergies, is it okay for them to shave their hands as well as their legs? They have skin allergies. What is forbidden for men is to shave their beard. So no. that's, that's only haram. Yes. To shave it. The rest haven't, haven't seen any, any issues with okay. that. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. Answering three questions. And inshallah, um, that has fulfilled the three questions for the dear brother. It's really good to hear your voices. And inshallah, we hope to have many more callers calling in and getting a live response. We are also taking in questions via Facebook, via YouTube, via WhatsApp. You can send them over to us and we'll get it sent over to me and forwarded straight away to get a direct response. Sheikh, now while speaking, we have uh, many more questions coming in and I'm going to read out a question and it says, <coughs> are we allowed to touch the translated words of the Quran in other languages and what's the opinion opinion of Ayatollah Sayyid Sistani. The Sayyid mentions that yes, you can uh, touch if it's in different languages, not Arabic. Arabic you can't, unless no. you have wudu or ghusl from the wajib and so forth. But English, let's say translation, uh, Spanish, French, Any other language. should be fine, yes, but you, can, you can't touch it. No. Inshallah, thank you very much for that, Sheikh. We've got another um, YouTube question, no, sorry, WhatsApp question. It says, can I pray Salah with my niqab on? The issue is that you have to make sure that the place of the sujood is clear. The forehead is clear, so you can put the turba on the floor when you pray. That's important. Uh, no. That the place of the sujood to be clear uh, for, for the sujood. For the sujood. That's important. <coughs> Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikh. We've got another question and it says, what is the ruling of responding to the salam? What is the ruling for responding? Again, we've got, okay. What is the ruling for responding to the salam greeting conveyed via a third person? And what, and what is the protocol for responding to such a salam? Yeah, sometimes a friend tells you, you know, say hello to your dad, yes. as, as, they, as yes. they say. So in this case, uh, it's, <coughs> it's preferred to say, alayhi wa alaykum as salam. So to you and to him, the no. salam. It's been responded. Uh, yes, that, that's, that's the way it is. Let me just complete and, and, and uh, continue with the narration of the Ghadir. 
um, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam, he mentions about uh, the importance of Quran, that we have to reflect in the Quran, understand the uh, ponder in, into the verses. And then he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that there's nobody who can uh, you know, tr 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 interpret or give the, the exegesis or the tafsir of the Quran except the one who I'm holding his hand no. up and uh, he is and man kuntu mawlah fahada ali mawlah wa huwa ali ibn abi talib the prophet says ali two times just to make sure that he's ali ibn abi talib no. not other ali's not any other ali to make it to see how, how much he emphasizes allah alayhi on his name, on his uh, father's name, yes. the Imam min ba'dih, and so forth, to make sure that the hujjah, the proof of Allah, has been fulfilled. Nobody has could come and you know afterwards and say, no, we didn't hear, we didn't see, we didn't meet witness, or say it was another Ali. Exactly. Wahwa Ali ibn Abi Talib. Very clear. That's why the Holy Prophet later he said, "Ala waqad adayt that I have fulfilled. Ala waqad balqat that I have delivered." I have made sure that they've listened and heard this message, Yes. this uh, commandment. That I've made a clear <coughs> this message of uh, appointing Ali alayhi salam. Salam Allah alayhi. Salam Allah alayhi. <coughs> Again, thank you very much for that, Sheikh. And it's been very clear that the Prophet emphasized that it was Ali, and then he specialized as Ali ibn Abi Talib to make sure that the only Khalifa after him, it was Ali ibn Abi Talib. Sheikhna, We've got many more questions coming in and we've got another question and it says Is it haram to shave the beard? It's a YouTube question and what you have said, you've responded to that and it is haram or makruh to shave the beard? No, it's definitely haram. It's not makruh to shave the beard. It's no, haram it and I, I can say majority if not the consensus of the ulama. No. Even Ahlul Sunnah they have this. That, no. you, know, you, you can't shave your beard. Inshallah. Thank yes. you very much for that, Sheikh. We've got a question that says, Salam, Sheikh, or Salam Alaikum. And it's a YouTube question. Is it allowed to wear a hijab in light colors during the summer, like white and lavender? Black is too hot for me. What is the Sharia saying about that? What does our maraja say about this? You see, the maraja would say that uh, you have to look at the common norms at Urf to see if, if this type of hijab, <coughs> you know, attracts you know, sometimes some colors really attract pinkish, reddish, attracts the opposite gender. Yes. So they have to choose a color that doesn't attract and in the same time wouldn't uh, basically cause so much heat. No, know, no. Like so you black can wear and dark. Yes, you could, like, they've stated colors like white and lavender. So yeah. get more bright colors, but don't bring too many colors that are going to make you stand out in a bunch of people. Sheikhna, we've got a nice question. And... It's about Toba. It says it's a WhatsApp question. Salam alaikum, Sheikh. When will Toba not be accepted? For example, when the sun rises from the west, or when Imam Al Mahdi appears, peace be upon him. Of course, the the Toba would not be accepted as we have in the Holy Quran. That, for example, when Pharaoh uh, he was drowning, he said that now I have believed in the Lord of Musa. Yeah. So Jabril told him it's too late. It's too late. Alan now. It's too late. <coughs> so uh, when the Ma'asum <coughs> reveals his 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 hujja and fulfills the hujja, no. of course the tawbah would be the doors would be closed on that on that tyrant. No, inshallah. Inshallah. <coughs> Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. We're gonna come down to the final question before we end the show. And the question is a YouTube question. It says, <coughs> how can we have unity with Sunnis when they follow the companions and Shias love the Ahlul Bayt, alayhum salam The true unity initially is with Ali Muhammad salam alayhi. Behold on the rope of, of Allah. وَاَتَسَمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Quran says that uh, behold on the rope of Allah. Tafsir of Ahl Bayt, alayhum. That the rope of Allah are Ahl Bayt, Ali Muhammad, salam alayhum. Alayhum So the unity is with coming to Ahl Bayt, alayhum salam. Yes, we can <coughs> be united in terms of humanity, respecting humans. As we were, now we live with Christians, with, with atheists, we live as human beings. Yes. We have neighbors, Sahih. Hindu, atheist, Jewish, Christian. 
So we live with them as human beings in peace and, and, and uh, harmony. Yes. <coughs> but not to let down and, and, and you know, our aqidah. Yes. Because they believe in aqidah that we have to respect their aqidah, so we, we have to conceal our aqidah. No, no. no. So unity in humanity, yes, not in aqidah. Inshallah. Sheikhna, thank you very much. And again, thank you to all the viewers that have sent in their questions. Unfortunately, it is our last show before welcoming and accepting and seeing the month of Muharram and Safar. I would like to thank Sheikh. Thank you very much for all your efforts and answering all these questions. Thank you very much for your preparations. And thank you very much for providing us with ahadith and rawayat that always supported our faith. I would like to thank our team that have always been uh, productive and always have been helpful in providing the questions and I would like to thank each and every individual for sending in their questions inshallah we have tried our best to fulfill your needs and answer as many questions as we can inshallah you shall be celebrating the rest of Eid al-Ghadir which is the next couple nights and inshallah we will be soon uh, commemorating the martyrdom of Imam Hussein and welcoming the month of Muharram for now we will say fi amanillah ma'a salama and see you after Safar inshallah ma'a salama Oh mm -hmm. We question our daily position Seeking answers and definitions Get the queries of your chest With Ahkam SOS This household consisting of 13 orphan children and three widows, all living under one roof. The father of the house, who was a hard working man, sadly passed away in a car accident. Since then, the family who lived a happy and comfortable life are now struggling to obtain the minimal necessities of life. <laughs> Since the father's death, this family.